Hi everyone, we are going to carry on looking at John chapter 4, so let's uh, crack on. Apologies if you can hear my children upstairs. Uh, it says, uh, yesterday we read about how Jesus left Judea and then departed again for Galilee. And then it says he had to pass through Samaria, which seems like a very small sat nav detail. But um, if you know the history, you'll know that the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. There was uh, real animosity between them. The Jews literally thought the Samaritans were half-breeds with their mixture of different religion. And they did the sort of extreme version of what uh, you might do in a supermarket if you see someone you don't want to bump into. Um, but they wouldn't just do that. They would literally avoid the town that the supermarket was in. And they took the long route round. And yet Jesus doesn't. He doesn't avoid or take the long route. He goes straight to the heart of it, to where there's um, the stigma and the taboo and the, the marginalizing. And he also um, is intentional about it. He's purposeful um, and, uh, and, he, and he initiates in his seeking, which he still does today. And then it says he, uh, wearied as he was from the journey, he goes and sits beside the well which is a small detail, but again, if you look back in the Old Testament, you'll see that um, the well was a place where um, uh, they, the wives were met for the first time. So Moses, um, Abra uh, Moses, Isaac and Jacob, they all met their wives at wells. And so here we have Jesus um, that, uh, that we know is the, the, our bridegroom waiting for this uh, sinful woman bridegroom and the bride coming in this beautiful encounter um yes so this woman from samaria comes to draw water and jesus says to her give me a drink um and this encounter again it, it could be short and sweet but we have this whole chapter instead of conversation uh why is that we have this um interacting and engaging listening responding challenging inviting what does this tell you about god um it's about relationship now she's surprised. He says, give me a drink. And she says to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? Which um, you can see straight away that being a follower of Jesus means engaging with people across divides, be it social, political, gender, uh, racial, uh, whatever it is. And it's always worth thinking again about your attitudes towards people. Is there someone who you look down your nose at? Or maybe you do have a hatred towards them? And even in a city like ours where we pride ourselves on inclusivity and diversity, there is still always going to be the temptation at least for a creep in our heart for superiority or tribalism. So um, she asks this though from a purely cultural perspective, you know, hang on, how is, how are you, how is this, uh, how are you asking for me for a drink? And I find it so interesting that um, she's shocked enough to comment on this interaction regarding their personal divides. You know, she's a Samaritan and she's a woman, uh, little knowing that there's an even greater divide and that she's talking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who has already crossed this great divide in his incarnation and who is going to uh, cross and vanquish the great cosmic divide of sin and death separation uh, in order to help her find her way back home. And reading it, I was reminded of David's question as well, who was also good at observing and seeing these divides, um, except for him it was humanity and creation. And he asks, we're noticing the heavens and the stars, saying, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Which then also reminded me of God questioning Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth, commanded the morning or walked the recesses of the deep? Uh, so when I read this, uh, women's ignorant but curious question, I'm compelled to um, ask God to help me to increasingly grow in awe at the marvel of the cross, um, realization of this great divide, of the wonder of how, uh, like we sing, how great the chasm that lay between us, how the God of uh, ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. So she's saying what, and then Jesus answers her. Well, he kind of answers her. He says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that's saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So she's 
probably looking for a nice tidy answer, but he offers more. And I love her answer. I don't know if it's sincere or if it's, you know, sarcastic. She's like, uh, sure, but sir, <laughs> you've nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. So fact, fact, and here are the problems. Um, but as we know from the story, she's had, she's been with five men. She's currently with her sixth, sixth who's not her husband. And so I think there's a degree of world uh, weariness in there. You know, here's someone who knows how the world works and it hasn't been kind to her. She, um, she sees, she's very pragmatic and practical. She's stating the, the, the plain hard facts. He's just told her this incredible um, heavenly reality and she, the sort of mind blowing heavenly reality. And she's like, but here are the facts that I can see. The world's deep, you don't have a bucket. Um, which, how often do we do, we do that to? Um, and then she asks what sounds to me like a challenge. Are you greater than our father, Jacob? Um, and she's holding on with, uh, she's con more concerned about the, her place and her tradition. Like, this is what I know. Um, and there's this place. And what are you offering? Is it greater? And I think that we too um, are often tempted to ask the same question of Jesus. Jesus, are you really greater? Are you greater than this thing? Are you greater than my sin? Um, are you greater than this uh, this tradition or this thing that I'm, other thing that I'm holding on to. And I love that as a church, two of our values are, uh, Jesus leads and everything changes but the gospel. We, we, uh, endeavor to be, um, not bound by tradition, but to, st but to be aware that the Holy Spirit is living and active. And we want to follow Jesus wherever he goes and however that looks. Um, and again, like Toby was saying on Sunday, if you've not watched it, you should check it out. It was such a great preach. But um, that reminded that after a historical year of lockdown where it's been more than a year and a half that we've been able to meet together as a Shoreham family in our building. Um, but hasn't Jesus shown himself to be so much greater and more faithful than our building um, or, or place? And so then Jesus uh, responds, um, responds to her. Um, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Ooh. And then the woman says to him, at this point, it sounds like with a hint of veiled desperation, Sir, give me this water then so that I will not be thirsty. You'll have to come here to draw water. Again, she's still only seeing what she can see with her eyes. She's not seeing the heavenly reality of this, but it's there's there's desperation. He hasn't given up on her. He's undeterred by her evasiveness and her distracting questions. So she says, give me this water. And again, he could have, but then Jesus changes tactic. And then he says to her, go and call your husband. What? What is he doing? At this point, he could have just done it, you know, but he says, go and call your husband. What is going on here? Jesus is not calling her out. He's drawing her out. As it says in Proverbs 20, the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. And that's what Jesus does. He doesn't call us out, but he draws us out. He wants to get to her inner person. And he, in order to do that, he's going through her wound which in this case is her shame and her sin that she's been trying to hide, that we all try to hide when we've got sin and shame, those dark bits of us, those secret things that we try to pretend that we're better than we are. But Jesus knows everything. And we like to pretend, but he wants real. He wants honest. He wants us warts and all with, with um, all of our wounds. And if you're afraid that he, uh, this is uh, going to be too painful, let me remind you that um, Jesus is so tender, whether it's physical wounds. I'm reminded of the Samaritan, the story of the, the, the other Samaritan where there was the man who was beat up on the side of the road and the Samaritan man uh, tends carefully to cleaning the man's literal wounds. And then yet in this, so that's physical, practical, literal wounds. And yet in this case, it's her heart wounds, her emotional um, and spiritual wounds. Jesus is is exposing them to light and it's painful, but it doesn't crush her. In fact, she's liberated. Um, Jesus's knowledge um, of hers has not enslaved her, but, but liberated her to the point that then she leaves her, her stuff and she runs and she wants to tell everyone else about, about it. Um, 
so yes, if you feel like you're watching this today and you've got some some wounds or some secret things that you're carrying or some shame, um, Jesus is, uh, is so drawn to you. Again, check out Toby's Preach on Sunday, but he is drawn to you and he wants to bring deep cleansing healing. Like that's... Uh, that's also another job of water. It nourishes us and it sustains us. We can't uh, live without it, but it also cleanses us. And he wants to clean those deep parts of us thoroughly. Um, and then Jesus goes on to say, it's not about, it's not, it's not about mountains. It's not about going to find, going, having to go to a sacred place, holy of holies. You can encounter me. You can know me wherever you are. The presence of God is with you wherever you are. The Father is seeking people who worship him in spirit and truth. Um, where, where you're watching right now, you can invite the Holy Spirit to, to come to you, to, to engage, you can engage with him like in, in a conversation, in relationship. You can um, uh, bring your wounds and your emotions, your thoughts and your study. And sometimes, like I said, we come to the word. If we come thirsty, we might not get any tidy answer. It might feel like more questions come from when we get stuck in. And that's okay. Um, Jesus always gives us more. And don't be, you know, don't be deterred by that. But um, yes, sorry, this video is getting really long, so I'm going to have to end it very quickly. But yes, the fields are white for harvest. He goes on to talk. When we encounter Jesus, then um, we are rich, we're forever changed. And there are so many people out there who are thirsty today, who don't even realize that they're thirsty. But if you've got the spirit of the living God in you, that living water, that spring that just overflows, then let me encourage you to initiate like Jesus. He, he could have just sat there quietly and saved her quietly, but there was conversation. Why don't you use your words today to converse with someone, to ask questions, to listen, to talk about um, how you've encountered Jesus and what he's done for you. Um, yes, bless you. Have a great day. Bye.